You are listening to Prophet Pearls with Nehemia Gordon and Keith Johnson, exploring biblical prophecy for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Welcome to Prophet Pearls from the land of the prophets, face to face. Keith Johnson, Nehemia Gordon, doing what we do best, opening up the Word of God, trying to figure out where there's common ground. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of common ground uh, for what we're doing. We're coming, Nehemia, all the way from Israel. And we're going to be addressing Jeremiah, and I cannot wait to talk about this particular passage. But before we do that, I have to say thanks again to some significant Prophet Pearl partners, the Maccabees. Thank you for supporting us. We're continuing to do our work. Let's get right into this. I guess before we get into it, I've got to say good morning to you, Nehemiah. Boker Tov, Keith. Yeah, and why is it Boker Tov? Because uh, you just arrived a few minutes ago. Yeah. I'm sure you probably had a really nice breakfast. Oh, it was wonderful. My mother made me an omelet. Did you take a bus? Did you walk? Did you get a ride? What was your situation? My mother made me an omelet with mushrooms and uh, and Mm -hmm. garlic and uh, Mm -hmm. melted cheese and... Mm -hmm. And then I, I got it right over here. Yeah. Yeah. So the setup is this, folks. I'm over here in a cave by myself, <laughs> sick. Nehemia goes to Bubby Dina's where he gets breakfast. And not once has he said, let me bring you over an omelet. So you know what? My food is to do the word of will of God. Let's get right into it. <laughs> How was it really? No, would you like to sleep tonight at Bubby Dina's? No, I'm fine. I'm going to stay here. I'm, I'm in quarantine. You know I'm sick. <laughs> I don't want to get anyone else sick. But we are in Jeremiah 32. Nehemiah, it's going to be hard for me not to preach in this passage. So you're going to have to balance it out um, um, with some great information. Uh, But I will tell you, this is a a really, it's amazing for a number of reasons. And so I'm I'm really looking forward to it. We're at uh, Jeremiah 32. But can you give us the parallel with with, with the original uh, Torah pearls? Yeah. So we're dealing here with, um, this is actually our 32nd, actually it's our 31st episode, but it's Mm -hmm. episode 32. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. because there was a double one we combined. Mm-hmm. This is the Torah portion of Bihar. Mm-hmm. And, uh, You're telling me it's the 32nd episode? Yep. And we're in Jeremiah 32. It's, 30, it's 30, a sign. Well, oh, is it really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think of that. Um, it's the 32nd Torah portion, and it's Jeremiah 32. Of course, the people who made the Torah portions are divided up, and the people mm-hmm. who made the chapters were two completely different people. So, But that's interesting. It's an example of coincidence that's completely un, uh, mm-hmm. irrelevant. Um, Behar is uh, Leviticus 25, verse 1 through 26, 2. And I believe the connection here is that we're dealing with buying and selling of fields. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. Which is really, I mean, I, I you know, well, as we go, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. And again, you know, we the last few times we, we, we didn't go verse by verse. But, you know, and when, when it calls for it, we will. Uh-huh. Um, but when we don't, we want people to make sure that they, they take the uh, opportunity to read the passage. Actually, and even when we do, passages. you yeah. should go read the passage. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean both. The, the go Torah check Torah. Keith and make sure it says what he says. <laughs> it says, it says what it says. <laughs> and check me too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, reading both the uh, Torah portion and, and the prophet section. Um, and we'll, we'll do our best to give, you know, other other um, references for things. But, you know, check it for yourself. It really is It really is a part of the, a part of the process. Now, um, can we get started? Let's do it. Okay. And Jeremiah said in English, but it doesn't say Jeremiah in Hebrew. Can you tell me what it says in Hebrew? Yirmiyahu. Ah, so what's the difference? Why Jeremiah in English and Yirmiyahu in uh Well, I can't Hebrew? tell you why Jeremiah in English, but I can tell you Yirmiyahu in Hebrew. What do you Hebrew mean you means? can't tell him why Jeremiah? I don't know Jeremiah. why it's Jeremiah. You have no idea why they made I mean, it I, easy. In, I, in a, I mean, I do know why. It comes from the Greek, Yeremias. But, exactly. Um, but in Hebrew, it's Yirmiyahu, which is... Um, Yehovah will lift up. Amen. Yehovah. Amen. And so that's the name of the prophet Jeremiah, Yeremiah. Uh, and it says, and, and here we have again this wonderful phrase. We've talked about it a few times. The Dvar Yehovah, and the word came, or it was, and the word of the Lord came in this situation unto me, saying, and then here comes what it is. And, and as soon as you hear that, um, the saying, I have to tell you, this example, this passage that we're talking about, it shows me again not only how big God is, but how mm-hmm. uh, detailed God is. Hmm. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me just read this and I'll just tell you how it felt to me. So here at Jeremiah says, and the word of the Lord came unto me. And I'm thinking, okay, the word of the Lord's going to come. It's going to be, and I am God. And you know, instead it says this, behold, Hanamiel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle, specifically, shall come unto thee saying, I'm looking here at the uh, King, King James version because you so overwhelmed me with the King James getting it right, the NASB, the NIV, the JPS all getting it wrong, so I've switched to the King James. That was like in one verse. One verse, I understand. Always that, right? <laughs> no, just for fun. Yeah, okay. uh, But it says, uh, 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 but the, it says, uh, Behold, Hananiel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle shall come unto thee, saying, Buy my field that is in Anatol, for the right of redemption is yours to buy it. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I read this, I know we're going to get into, you know, where where it is that, the, that we start talking about this and, what, and, 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 and how the redemption works. 
before we get into all of that, I just have to tell you, I just think it's really amazing that God got into the uh, uh, the buying and selling business. I mean, it's like he got into, he's telling Jeremiah, specifically, it's your, your, your uncle, and there's something that happens later that we got to focus on, but... He's specifically talking about uh, a, a transaction right. that's going to take place. Well, I, and I and I think we can we go back to Leviticus or, or at least re- remind people to go to the original Torah pearls mm-hmm. and have a look at Leviticus. There, there's a whole section that talks about buying and selling of fields, and specifically if a person is poor and he sells his field because there was this idea that the the land belongs to the family. It doesn't mm-hmm. belong to to me. It belongs to my family, mm-hmm. and I can sell it, but only up until the jubilee year, mm-hmm. and then it goes back. To uh, to the family or to me if I'm still alive, um, and and then you have the situation that you know if if I want, if someone in my family wants to redeem it they actually have that right mm-hmm. and that's actually a really significant concept I think this was our word of the week once goel mm-hmm. which means redeemer and here we have it in the literal sense of someone from your extended family who goes and pays the price to get the field back from the person it's been sold to. Mm-hmm. That is a is that is the literal meaning of redemption. It could also be with a person who sold them to slavery, mm-hmm. but the literal original meaning has to do with um, with property. And so it's saying, look, Jeremiah, you have the right to redeem this property, so go and buy it. And what's ridiculous about this is that the siege of Jerusalem has begun. In verse 24, the siege began. And the idea that someone would buy and sell a field. And it's interesting. We had another passage recently where we talked about uh, supply and demand and, and, and economics. Um, it was about you know, the, you know, selling the grain in, in, the, um, in the gate of Shomron, in the gate of Samaria. And before mm. they were selling donkey's head and during the famine and after the famine, you know, the, the price went down so much that you could buy um, a large amount of grain for a very cheap price. Mm. And here it's talking about something that's essentially worthless. Mm-hmm. And why is it worthless? Because the... Babylonians are besieging the city, you know, and you're talking about a field in Anatot. That's important. So Jeremiah was from Anatot. Anatot is a is a suburb about maybe uh, three or f- I, I call it a suburb. It's not really true mm-hmm. in biblical times. In biblical times, it was a completely separate city. Today, it's actually part of a neighborhood of Jerusalem called Pisgat Zeev. Yes, I, Zeev. I actually lived in Anatot for meaning in Pisgat Zeev for quite some time. And to this day, there's an Arab village there called Anata, mm. um, which preserves the word Anato. And the point is, it's outside of the city of Jerusalem, about about three miles or so. And imagine, so he's coming and saying, buy this field. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> the field is is uh, outside of the city walls of Jerusalem and the walls and, and the city's under siege. You're selling me something you don't even, I could never even take possession of. Mm-hmm. And, and the point is, that um, anybody hearing this would say, this is crazy. Why would anybody buy a field in Anatote? Anatote now is, occup- is Babylonian-occupied territory. Mm. That bill of sale will never be realized. You'll never be able to you know, do anything with it. Um, and again, this is this economics thing. It's worthless, so why would you buy it? And, mm-hmm. that, and that's the message of the prophecy, why he should buy it mm-hmm. despite you know, that. You know, I, and actually, Nehemiah, I'm going to do something I did a few uh, episodes again. Yeah. I, I, really, I really started this, and I, I really didn't want to start it. The way that I did, yeah. and the reason is, is because I can't, um, <laughs> I can't uh, not be able to say where Jeremiah is. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, and where is Jeremiah? He's in jail. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's saying, he's basically here's a guy who's in jail, and you think the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, Jeremiah saying, "Tomorrow you shall be released from prison." No. You're going to stay there, but while you're there, I need you to buy a piece of property. Oh, the property's no good, <laughs> but this is the word of the Lord. Well, and, and in a and, sense, the entire yeah. city of Jerusalem's in jail. It, exactly. And but on I'm top saying, of that, Jer- within that jail, within the city, Jeremiah, yes. he's in a pit called he's Tatsara in, Matara. Yeah. The, 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 it's some kind of like dungeon. And so that that's my point. So here it is. He's in a dungeon. Uh, be just, just be Jeremiah before we get going here. He's in a dungeon. He's waiting for the word. When's the word going to come? He's been yeah. prophesying <laughs> back and forth. And the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah while he's in jail, and you're expecting it to be what go buy a piece of property yeah. <laughs> i mean come on yeah. <laughs> and so i really it really is interesting though because we're going to find as this as we go on that the, the story gets better and better yeah. um but, but i do think it. context think wise it. it's really um it really is interesting that that's where he is when this uh when the word of the lord comes to him yeah verse 32 verse 8 and then Hanamel, sure enough uh then hanamel my uncle's son came to me in the court of the guard well, I was in jail. According to the word of the Lord, and said to me, "Buy my field, please." That is at Anatot, which is in the land of Benjamin. By the way, Nehemiah, yeah. um, it really is. You know, this is another one of those examples where, um, uh, where, where we've actually, and you mentioned, you know, living there and seeing it, but you know, to actually physically see where these places are yeah. and to know how close they are. I mean, what, what would you say it is? Twenty minutes. 
by car, would you say, from uh, from the center center? From the, the city. city? Well, for, let's say from the old city. Without traffic, I'd say it's 10 or 15 minutes. Wow. With traffic, amazing. it could be an hour. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, as we found out. Um, anyway, uh, um, th- but this is an interesting phrase. Um, um, it says here, so this whole thing happens. He's sitting in prison. He gets the word of the Lord. His uncle's uh, son comes and tells him about this piece of property. And then he says, buy my field, please. Um, for you have the right of possession and the redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. And then this phrase comes up. Then I knew that it was the word of the Lord. Did, did he not know when it first came? Well, I, guess, I mean, and I'm just bringing I mean, this up as a human it's response. A, it's a good point. It's a great question. But, but I think the point is, okay, I had this prophecy, what appeared, what, what I thought was a prophecy, and now it's been, you know, this completely unexpected. Hand me what he happens. thought was a prophecy. It says, know. he wrote it. It says well, the well, word of the, the Lord. One, you're the one who said he's not sure. Right? I, no, I'm saying here, it know. says, then I knew. What, did you not know in the beginning? I mean, the phrase to me, the reason I, I bring it It's interesting. Up, I like the phrase because, honestly, in, in times there yeah. have been situations in my life where I just knew that I knew that I knew that this is what I was supposed to do. And in the middle of it, there's a doubt that comes in. Then it happens. And then I say, wow, I knew then. It isn't that it, it wasn't that it wasn't, it wasn't right. real. It's just right. that that confirmation that came um, makes well, it and, say and, that. So. And, and also, let's remember that to know in biblical Hebrew means to know intimately. Mm-hmm. And so maybe what he's really saying is I, I knew that it was the word of uh, Yehovah, meaning I experienced it as Yehovah's word. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a possibility. But, but it's also possible where he's thinking like, Wait, what did God just say? Exactly. Buying a field? Buy a field. I'm, I'm in this pit, exactly. you know, sinking in the in in the in the. Mm. I won't describe it. I'm in this pit, and and the city's under siege. And you're saying my cousin's going to come? I, whoa, oh, I, maybe I'm just in great distress. Yeah, and I'm hallucinating. Yeah, and then all of a sudden his cousin shows up, and he's like, "Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah." You know, so but Deep but man. that's that's why the in the next phrase, and and then again, this is another one of those mm. things that just made me slow down a bit. It says, "And I bought the field." Yeah. Which was at Anatolis from Hananel, my uncle's son. And I weighed out the silver for him. 17 shekels of silver. And I'm thinking, the guy's in jail. He's weighing out silver. And it gets it gets better now. It gets better. Because now they're going to take us through the process of what we do at the closing table when you buy a piece of property. At least in the yeah. United States. I don't know over here in Israel if it's the same. But, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a drawn-out process that takes place. And in this, in this passage, we actually see in detail yeah. exactly what happens. <clears throat> so he says, what happens? He says, I weighed out 17 shekels. I signed and sealed the deed. Now, what does that mean? So I love it in Hebrew. The yeah. word is sefer, again, which is book. We've yes. seen that in previous passages. Any written document in Hebrew is called a book. Mm-hmm. So literally it says, and I wrote in the book, and I signed, and I uh, and I um, had witnesses testify, or witnesses witness, mm-hmm. and I weighed out the silver in the, um, in the scales. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. But then here's what I love. So again, Jeremiah's yeah. here. We got we're, we're, again context. The, the city's under siege. Let's do a. Let's do a. And uh, he's in prison. And, and he's in prison. Now let's do a. He's real locked estate. up in county. Let's do a real estate deal. And oh, by the way, hey, we're under siege. Hey, I need some witnesses to come in and witness. I'm about to do a. a, a come on, like this is really interesting to me. I'm sitting here thinking to myself. Well, and, and this, you know, let's go back to that. And I knew it was the word of Jehovah. Mm-hmm. Imagine even if Hanamel shows up. He's got to think like, wait a minute, the guards aren't going to let us do this. Where do I have any money from? I'm in prison. I'm in prison. But somehow everything comes together. It comes together. And that's and, the word of Jehovah. Yeah. And, and, but it gets specific. He says, then I took the deeds of purchase, mm-hmm. both the sealed copy containing the terms and conditions and the open copy. So it doesn't say in Hebrew plural. It says, I took the book, literally, yes. the book of the purchase, the sealed the, and literally, Hamitzvah v'chukim, the commandment and the statutes and the revealed. Mm. Now, do you know what that means? Come on with that. All right. So here's what they would do in ancient times. They would have um, a piece of parchment. And um, they would write the document. They would write write the contract essentially twice and sign it twice and have the witnesses sign twice. Mm-hmm. And one of the times, or meaning the top half, for example, or it could have been the bottom half, they would roll up and they would tie strings around. They'd make a little hole in there so they could tie a string around it. And this is one piece of parchment, and then they would take a um, take a, a piece of clay, and they would stamp the seal of the scribe or the witness or something. Look, or you're the judge. making this up. No, they found. No, how do you know? That's what they I want you to tell me. They, they actually well, found it. So, play, well, let me get to that. Okay. So, so, and then they would put the stamp the 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 signet ring into the clay, and um, and that would hold the sealed copy shut. 
And so if you wanted to go and examine it, you would say, um, okay, let me look at the revealed part of the scroll. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if there was any dispute, you would take it to a judge. The judge would examine the seal and he would see, okay, yeah, and he would ask, uh, Baruch, the son of Neriah, is this your seal? And Baruch would look at it and he'd say, oh, yeah, that's mine. That's seal. And it hasn't been tampered with. And then in the w- presence of the judge, they would, they would break the seal. Break the seal. And open up the sealed part of the document. And check it. And check, okay, do these two documents match? Or has someone tampered with the revealed document? Oh, that's and, this, and how do we know this? First of all, we found thousands of the seals um, in Jerusalem and in other places, but especially there's a place in Jerusalem that they found th- thousands of these seals, and you can see the little pieces of string on the back. Where uh, and, and originally, by the way, this was unfired clay. Mm-hmm. So they take a piece of clay, it would be a little bit wet, Sorry. they'd stamp it, and it would dry out. But if you came and you know poured water on it, it would dissolve. Mm-hmm. Right? It was very delicate. Except it turns out the place where they stored these documents burned, but it was burned by the Babylonians. And once you fire clay, then it lasts forever. Mm-hmm. So they found these seal, what are called seal impressions, um, on the documents, and on the back of them, you can actually see. Um, you can see sometimes a little string where it was attached. Mm -hmm. And one of the coolest ones, to me, this is probably the second most important document ever discovered in ancient Israel, and that is the seal of Baruch the son of Neriah. Yes, sir. And he's actually mentioned in this passage. Baruch the son of Neriah, his actually seal impression was discovered in the place in the the city of David, in in the old city of Jerusalem, or not actually outside the old city of Jerusalem, in the city of David. Um, and uh, that's pr- that's pretty amazing. Yeah, the most important one is the silver scrolls, but yeah, um, yeah. Uh, that were found in uh, near the Bagan Center. Anyway, so so how do we know this? So first of all, we found the seal impressions. Also, what we found is in a cave. This is really cool. Mm-hmm. They found these documents in a cave in uh, Samaria, in the mm-hmm. region of Samaria, where it had the, part of the document was still intact, and the seal uh, the seals were still intact. And you could see exactly how it functioned. And the really cool thing is that was not written by Israelites, that document. Mm-hmm. That was signed by Sanballat. Mm-hmm. The same Sanballat, or certainly from the same Sanballat. dynasty of Sanballat, that's mentioned in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah as the mm-hmm. enemy of Israel in Samaria. Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem? That's, that's right. Sanballat. That's Sanballat. We have his signature. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so we have this document that's open and sealed. And and, and, and do we have time to look at the, the passage in, in Isaiah where he talks about reading the, the you know, the... We have time, of course. Can we talk I mean, about I that? Mean, of course, we can. I, but right. While you're looking, just yeah, before, while sure. you're looking for that, again, um, one of the things that's uh, that's really interesting is that we're we're actually looking at an entire closing process. I mean, this yeah. is in ancient Israel. This is the process for transferring of property, and and I, I I just think what's so interesting about this is that this is in the book of Jeremiah, and again, we're going to get to why it's so important. But the detail is the thing that I get, I guess, that really. Kept, caught me off guard. I mean, yeah. I mean, it could have just been, hey, you're going to have to buy this piece of property and the property is purchased. You know, not all the detail, but we get yeah. to all the detail. And that's right. really so here it's like. Isaiah 29, verse, verse 11 to 12. It says, so that all prophecy has been to you like the words of a sealed document. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Meaning, you know, um, all right, let's read it. If it is handed to one who can read and he is asked to read, read it. Um, wait, hold on a second. If it is handed to the one who can read and he's asked to read it, he will say, I can't read it because it's sealed. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And if the document is handed to one who cannot read and if he is asked to read it, he will say, I can't read. Meaning he doesn't even know that, oh yeah, I can't read it because it's sealed. He just real, you know, he doesn't even get that far. He says, I can't, you Mm -hmm. know. And the point is, Jehovah has given us these prophecies and it's like a sealed document to us. Mm -hmm. It's right in front of us. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, 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 even if we know how to read, we're not accessing that information, mm. um, or we're accessing the information. We're not understanding it. Mm. There, there's, you know, scales on our eyes, as some yes. people say. Yeah. But really, that's what he's talking about. It's like a sealed document. So here we see this is actually a sealed document, a revealed document. That's really cool to me. Yeah. Well, here's the thing that I like. And yeah. After we deal with the issue of the sealed document, and the open yeah. document, and I commanded Baruch in their presence. And this is what I like. Jeremiah says, "Thus says Yehovah Tzavo, Yehovah of Hosts, the God of Israel." Then he says again, now we're going to bring the word. I think you skipped something. No, and I commanded verse 12. Man, I said, Uncle Son, sign the seal. Verse 12. Yeah, we talked about what happened to the process. You didn't read verse 12. But we just talked about it. Can you read it, please? No, you read it. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Verse 12. Let me pull it up. You just don't want to do it here. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Uh, and gave the deed to Baruch the son of Neriah, he's described son of Machseah, in the presence of my kinsman Hanamel, of the witnesses who were named in the deed, and all the Judeans who were sitting in the prison compound. In their presence I charge Baruch as follows. And the revelation from that phrase, here it comes. Give us what 
You wanted to read that first, so there must be no, some. No. That, that, uh, we're going to read it. Okay. And I commanded Baruch that. in the presence saying, thus says the Lord God of hosts. And you know, as he's telling him, he says, now I'm going to say these words. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel. Take these deeds, this sealed deed of purchase and the open deed. Not, this isn't Jeremiah speaking. He's saying, this is what Yehovah is saying. Take these deeds, because he knows the process. Yeah. The sealed deed of purchase and this, what he calls the open deed, you just right. explained it, and put them in an earthenware jar that they may last a long time. Now, what's really cool to me about yeah, that yeah. is the Dead Sea Scrolls yes, sir. Were, were discovered, the original ones in, in uh, Cave 1 and uh, Cave 2, they were in earthenware jars, mm -hmm. and that earthenware jar was sealed with actually with pitch, mm. and they lasted perfectly intact for 2,000 years. 2,000 years? Yep. I mean, isn't that, that is just, oh, wow. So he tells them this and is And I got to wonder, did they get it from here? Did they, you know, did they question. read this story and say, oh, this is how we'll preserve the scrolls? Oh, that's a good thought. Yeah. So it says, but for, for thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards will again be brought in this land. And when he says that, that just becomes the, like the culmination of all of those details that we're talking about. How the purchase the deed then opened and closed and he's in prison and all of right. that. And he says, I mean, that becomes the good news for Jeremiah. He says, look, houses and fields and vineyards will again be be bought in this land and he says that which i think is interesting how many times the word of the lord comes in the midst of circumstances that look almost impossible yeah. in, in that circumstance no, not almost. It, I, looks impossible. it looks impossible and, and in that situation he says but here it is now we just had that story a couple a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. where it's, this is what this what, what you know he was in he's done dealing with economy this is what the, the cost of a of, 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 of the grain will be going to be now we're dealing with uh, he's dealing with the right. issue. Well, and, and, of, and the point there was exactly it was it, it was he's saying, look, we could have all the rain in the world, and we're not going to have that, that those mm -hmm. prices. What are you talking about? Yeah, that that can't be. And God said, look, you don't you know you don't trust me. All right, you're going to get you know you're going to you're not you're going to see it, but wow. not benefit from it. And here we have a very similar thing, absolutely. Mm. Um, and, and this is actually a theme that appears in other places in Jeremiah that what looks now like it's like it, there's no hope. Guess what? There's going to be hope when you're coming back here. And it sounded insane. You know, think about it. The Babylonians are besieging the city. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the prophet's in jail. And the prophet's in jail. <laughs> and they know what the Babylonians do. They've seen this happen before. The, the Assyrians and the Babylonians, they come and they exile entire nations. Mm. So we're going to be sent off into some exile. And you telling me we're going to be, uh, this deed's going to be worth something? That, mm. that you know, it, it, you know, it's almost like... Uh, you know, uh, to, you know, to bring an analogy from from the economic crisis of 08, you know, people like at the last minute said, oh, I've got some stocks from Fannie and Freddie. Would you like to buy them? Well, oh, wow. well, they weren't worth anything. Why would any imagine, though, if a prophecy came and said, you shall buy the stock of Fannie and Freddie. And one day it will be worth a lot of money. You'd think like you're crazy. What, I'm not wow. buying that. What, a, what am I, a sucker? Yeah. Um, so um, I think this is pretty cool. It reminds me of some modern uh, examples of, of similar sorts of situations. And one of them is, um, you know, studying in history uh, about the, the final days before the fall of Saigon. Mm -hmm. And they say that people were buying and selling and going about their business, not realizing that in, in, in a matter of weeks, um, the entire economic system would, would end. Mm -hmm. They would be under this communist rule and, and whatever, you know, merchandise you bought or anything like that would be irrelevant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people would be end up, you know, hundreds of thousands of people dying in prison um, mm -hmm. and, and being murdered. Uh, you know, you know it's and, interesting. And, and, you're not a news guy. You don't want yeah. to watch a lot of news. But just a few weeks ago, I don't know if you knew this, just yeah. a few weeks. Well, actually, it would have been a few months ago because now we're in May, but we're actually recording this in March. Yeah. Um, um, this happened in Russia with the ruble. You know, one oh, really? day, you didn't know about that. No, tell me about oh, this. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this is, like a, this is like international news. I mean, the oil prices are going down, and all of a sudden, the ruble starts to fall. And literally, people watch their fine. I mean, they were, like their, their money just became... Half of its value, just like that, mm. overnight. I mean, you know, people talk is, a lot about that. And this is even worse than that. Yeah. Because if you're in Russia right now and you own a piece of land, maybe that land's value has on paper been lost. But if you hold on to that for the next 10 years or 20 years or 70 years, one day it'll be worth something. Mm. And here he's saying, this land, I mean, you're giving me a piece of paper. It's sealed. It's not sealed. It doesn't matter. A piece of parchment. Uh, we're going into exile and the Babylonians own the land now, mm -hmm. you know, inheritance. What does that have to do with it? And, and I love this analogy of, you know, or this example in, in Saigon where like they, they think they're going about their business not knowing what's, you know, not, not – they didn't realize in the time of Jeremiah he did realize. And I got to wonder – I'm going to – you know, I just got to wonder here. You know, we're here recording this on uh, March 5th, 2015. And I got to wonder people in years to come, 
if they're going to you know look back and say oh yeah the people before the great the before the collapse of the world monetary system mm-hmm. Keith and Nehemia were sitting there and they were talking about their ministries and not realizing that any day on uh, March 17th, a tsunami mean? would wash across <laughs> Lake Michigan, and that would be the end of the world economic system. Wow. May it I don't be. think that'll happen. But. Not <laughs> <laughs> but imagine. So in this situation, they know it's going to happen, and, um, and and God is saying, oh, no, you're, you're coming back. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, you're, you're going to have this opportunity to buy and sell again. And I'm reminded of the, you know, the famous passage. Where he talks about, you know, he says, once again, old men and old women will be, you know, walking through the streets and there'll be the sound of the kol uh, chatan yes. kol kala, the, the sound of the groom and the sound. <coughs> there will be the sound of the groom and the sound of the bride in the streets of Jerusalem. And Jeremiah prophesies this and people are like, what are you talking about? We're like, you know, eating rats to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're about to be taken as slaves into Babylon. And you're talking about having weddings, weddings in the streets of Jerusalem. And to me, that is, is so amazing. That I could walk around the streets of Jerusalem today and see that Jeremiah was right. Wow. You know, it's so easy to look in, in hindsight and say, oh, yeah, of course he said that because we knew the calculation and we have mm-hmm. faith. But when you're in the middle of that situation and you're saying, you know, w- once again, these things will happen. You'll be buying and selling land. You'll be celebrating. You'll be, um, you know, children will be playing in the mm-hmm. streets. And, you know, you think, like, he's nuts. What's he talking about? That, mm-hmm. that, this can't be true. And now it is. It's a fact that's happened. Mm. Well, I will tell you when he when the switch comes after we deal with all the details of the real estate and, yeah. and the circumstances him being in jail, yeah. um, then he does this. Which Jeremiah, I mean, I I, I just kind of brought into his mind. He lets us into his mind and his in, into his heart because it says after all of that, then he prays. Mm-hmm. And and when he prays, he prays this this prayer that really is a message. It's a sermon, um, and and it's 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 ah wow. So, so we can take one verse at a time. We can go back and forth. Um, but well, just, let's start verse seventeen. Yeah, That's seventeen. Uh, so, um, in verse seventeen, and he says, and, and it says, here's an example where we have him speaking about Yahovah, but he uses the word Adonai as Lord, capital L, little O R and D. Mm-hmm. Uh, ah, Adonai, God, behold. Whoa, 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 and I'm saying, well, in here Adonai it says English is God, but then it's Yahovah in, in yeah. Hebrew. But in English, they they say, okay, now we're going to capitalize the God. To make sure to know that it's Yehovah. Yeah, yeah. So he says, it's Adonai Yehovah, and in English it's Ah, Lord God, behold, you, and this this goes back to a really interesting thing that I, I really like when the prophets remind us of this and people are reminded of it. You are the one who made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing, and then it says in English, is too difficult for you. Yeah. Is that good enough? Is it mean? good enough? Is that a good enough phrase? Nothing is too difficult for you? Well, I want to talk about aha, or mm-hmm. you have ah, right? Uh, ata. <laughs> no, no, it's aha. Aha, yes. Aha. Yes. That's really interesting, that word aha. Mm-hmm. And um, as I read that, um, as I read this verse, it seems to me um, Jeremiah is trying to convince himself. Like he's he's saying these words out loud because what are you talking about? He knows theologically he's trying to true. convince himself. I think he's trying to convince himself. Convince himself what? That wait, I just had this vision, I, and and it came true. The guy showed up, and I sold the field. I know this has got to be Yehovah doing this, and nothing's beyond his ability. But deep in his mind, he's thinking, "What? I, okay, folks. Yeah. I mean, here. Well, I, I, and I'm and I'm partially getting. I, that's why that. I brought the phrase what? earlier, where he says, "I knew it was the word of Yehovah." That's why. That's why I wanted to focus on that because first, the word of the Lord comes. This things happens. The details comes, and then he says. And I knew it was the word of Yahweh. Then he says, "Thus says the uh, Yahovah." I mean, I. Well, I, so aha! I think you know, he's preaching like, now. I think he's like oh, at the place okay. where he's like saying, "You know, here it here it is, folks." I mean, and he's and he's and he's recording it for us to show the world. Listen now, that maybe I maybe I went too far, but I I, yeah. I I listened to the prayer and I read the prayer and I thought, "Wow, this is Jeremiah, not at all." Thinking, I need to, conf- you know, is, this is really happening. Well, this so aha, him. they often will translate it as alas, mm-hmm. and I think that's a better translation here. Okay, Th- there's a certain amount of like what, what, what? So Jeremiah four ten is an example of aha. He likes that word, Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says, and I said, Ah, Lord God, or uh, Aha, Adonai Yehovah. Surely you have deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying it shall be well with you. Yet the sword threatens the very life. So Jeremiah tends to use this phrase and others as well when, like, he's like, wait. I don't understand what what mm-hmm. now, now he knows that nothing is beyond Jehovah. I mean, he's saying this statement, but I, I think, and I could be wrong, 
from the word aha that he's trying to convince himself. That's that's my view. Well, I'm sticking with it. When we talk to Jeremiah about this, he's going to say, you know, I listened to Prophet Pearls. And <laughs> I've, got a, I've got an issue with you, Nehemiah Gordon. I, I told you ahead of time, here comes the word of the Lord. I then tell you, and I know it's the word of the Lord. I say it's the word of the Lord. I even say, thus saith the Lord. And then you tell the people that I'm trying to convince myself. No, I'm trying to let the world know. Ah, Yehovah. Ah, Adonai, Yehovah. But that's not the Behold. meaning of, I, I don't see that as the meaning of aha. Uh, okay. Meaning, it could, could have chosen a different word. Okay. Um, but okay. Behold. You have made the heavens and the earth by your great power. And the reason I thought, the yeah. reason that the phrase that was yeah. excited me was, sometimes you said this, sometimes yeah. you think of God as the God of Israel and you're reminded mm-hmm. he's yeah. the one who does it all. And Amen. I mean, that's, you know, he's, he goes to the big picture. He's like, yeah. you made the heavens and the earth. And then, come on, did you not, is this not going to be the word of the week here? Which This one? next phrase? Nothing is too difficult for you in English? Beseda. No, come on. So you, 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 okay. you, you got to tell me. All right. So the word is yipale. Yipale. It says, lo yipale mimcha kol davar. Nothing is too difficult for you. And that's the word that also could be translated as um, hidden, hidden and wonderful. It's nothing yes. too wonderful for you. It's not, nothing is too, nothing is too, it's hidden from you. And we have this uh, this phrase uh, two times, which is really, really clear. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one is Genesis eighteen fourteen. Yes. Um, where And it's a similar sort of thing. Where um, you know the, they the angels are telling them this thing, thing's going to happen, and she laughs or he laughs, you know, mm. um, and and then they says, mm. is anything too difficult, hidden, mm. want, too wonderful for Yehovah? Uh, at this time, I will return, etc. You know that about you know, and Sarah will have mm. a son. So uh, it sounds like something impossible. And he's saying, is anything too difficult for Yehovah? It's a rhetorical question. Obviously, the answer is no. Deuteronomy 17, uh, 8 is talking about when something is too difficult for you or hidden from you mm-hmm. in a matter of judgment. Mm-hmm. That's uh, where you go to the Levitical priest, the judge at the temple. Um, so there it's it's nothing is too difficult for Yehovah, but it is too difficult for, for us. So we've got to ask Yehovah. And um, Psalm chapter uh, 119, verse 18, it's our prayer. That's what I'm waiting for. This is the prayer. All your lists. This is it. it. Uncover my eyes that I may see. Niflaot from the same word. Wonderful hidden things from your Torah. Amen. Now, give them what the three letters are. Okay, three letter root in every word in biblical Hebrew. Pe, Lamed, Aleph. Mm. Uh, which is the word pella, which means wonderful, difficult, hidden. And, of course, one of the places where we see that is where, uh, Man- well, we'll actually get to this section, I yep. believe, where um, Manoach, um, uh, at the father of uh, Samson, asked the angel, what's your name? In Judges thirteen eighteen, That's coming And the soon. angel of Yehovah said to him, why do you ask That's my name, Bahu Peli? And it is hidden. It is hidden. It's beyond you. You, you can't it's comp- you, you don't need. Yeah, it's hidden. You don't yeah. need to know what it is. Um, and this is why, actually, I, I wanted to, yeah. to make this the word of the week was my, my argument about uh, Jeremiah actually, absolutely mm-hmm. knowing that this is Yehovah. And oh, is, absolutely. Yeah. He's convincing himself that this is Yehovah. <laughs> He's saying, look, this is the theology. This has to be Yehovah. <laughs> I know it's saying. insane. <laughs> But, uh, but it's got to be him. Nothing's beyond Yehovah. Nothing shows. But then he goes on. He goes to the favorite phrase that we yeah. talked about. Oh, yeah. He says, who shows loving kindness to thousands, but repays the iniquity of fathers under the bosom of their children after them. O oh, great and mighty God, Yehovah of hosts is his name. Ah. Yeah. Wow. Now, this is based on Exodus chapter 20, verses 5 to 6, the Ten Commandments, mm-hmm. where he says, uh, he opens it up. Or it's in the middle there. Kenochi Yehovah Elohecha, Fraim Yehovah, your God. El Kana, jealous God, poked avon avot al banim al shilashim al ribaim lesonai. I visit the iniquity or repay the iniquity of the fathers upon the sons, upon the third generation, upon the fourth generation, to those who hate me. Mm-hmm. And that's a key word there. And he says, and and, da, and I do or and do um, uh, righteousness or chesed, difficult word to translate, to the thousandth generation, to those who love me and keep my commandments. And um, of course. Uh, we've discussed this before. We don't have to go into the whole thing. But um, uh, Ezekiel chapter 18 and chapter 33, I believe, take up this issue and they say, well, wait a minute. I've got no chance. My father sinned. I'm just going to be punished. That's what it says mm-hmm. in the Ten Commandments. And Ezekiel says that's only if you continue in your father's sin. Mm-hmm. And so the key word in, in Exodus 20 verses 5 to 6 is for those who hate me, if you mm-hmm. continue to hate God and act like you hate God. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jeremiah is clearly basing himself here on this passage, which is pretty cool. It's quoted many, many times. And I actually not. think it's in Exodus 34 verses six to seven. Go look up those verses. This is a, this is like a signature prayer of Jeremiah, like uh, the yeah. signature prayer of Solomon when Solomon is praying um, after the temple is mm-hmm. dedicated. You know, you have, you have certain prayers where it's like, wow, this to me, uh, for me, when I'm reading this prayer, it's like the signature prayer of Jeremiah. Here he is in prison. He's been told to do this absolutely unfathomable thought that as it is being, you know, 
surrounded by the Babylonians. They know what's going to happen. Like you say, they know they're going to be taken away. He is obedient to go through the process, does it in detail. He speaks the word of Yehovah. He proclaims the word of Yehovah. He sees the whole thing happen, and then he goes into this prayer. It's like, and again, for me, this, like I say, it's a signature prayer for him because he goes through and he gives us history. He gives us who God is, what he is, how he operates. He says he's great in counsel, mighty indeed, whose eyes, and this is a hard one for people to understand, but it's true. His eyes are open to some of the ways of the sons of men. No, his eyes are open to all the ways of the sons of men, giving to everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his deeds. And then he goes on and then he brings them back to history. Who has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, bringing us all the way back yeah. to what he did, which we hear over and over again, reminding people that Yehovah is the God who brought them out of the land of Egypt with a strong and mighty arm. And it says, and, and, and even to this day, e- and here's where it comes, even to this day, both in Israel and among mankind, you have made a name for yourself as at this day. And Jeremiah's in the pit. Mm-hmm. He's, in the, he's, in the, he's in the crap hole. I mean, and he's and, he, and he's giving us this. No, he is. Do you want to elaborate? No, on that? it's a fact. I mean, it's a sewer hole, and he's there, and he, and he's in the middle of all this. And I may, can I stop? Yeah. May we be like this in circumstances that are absolutely untenable, that are just terrible. There's people that are in, and I see this especially as I travel the world, where there are people who don't have the resources, they don't have the big job, they don't have the finances. But they have a relationship with God, and you could look at their circumstance and say, "Wow, what you know? How do you how do you praise God in the midst of no bathroom, no food, no money?" And they say, "But this is who God is." And so, so when I'm hearing Jeremiah, I'm reminded of people in, in difficult positions, and then I ask myself, conviction that says to me, "Okay, so you're a little sick, and Nehemiah won't give you breakfast, and you're stuck in this apartment, and you you don't have a look. That's nothing. God, you're amazing." You're a, you're a, you're a, you're absolutely amazing. I'm only thankful that I've got breath that I can actually praise you, and that's what Jeremiah's doing. And the food I filled the refrigerator. In the food. <laughs> <laughs> Woe is me! I have no food. I mean, no, 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 no I'm telling you, we're all, we're down to nothing. Oh, <laughs> well, but um, no, but no, I'm just saying that 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 basically that he is. You know, I, I really can't. Even, I can't complain. I, I can't complain about anything. Who he is, and 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 and, and as it says here. And you have made a name for yourself as it as, as at this day. Jeremiah's sitting there thinking, wow, God is doing it. He's at it again. He does what he does. I mean, it's, I don't know. Uh, and then he goes again. Well, I, I got to go back because, yep. you know, you're, you're, yep. you're, I'm, I'm you're excited right. about there's, that. There's, and you should be excited. Yes. There are people right now who are spiritually in that, in that crap pit. They're, you know, they're suffering in many ways. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, and, and. Look, I want to go back to the word aha, which, mm-hmm. you know, is alas, or, or how did you have it in your English? Like ah, or... Yeah, ah. Yep. Ah, okay. So this in Hebrew is an exclamation of, uh, what we call an exclamation of disbelief. That's like mm-hmm. this category of grammar. You can look it up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I think that's really key. He's expressing on the one hand with the word aha, this disbelief, and then immediately following it up, well, I know this is true, despite my disbelief. And, and I think that's that's really key from, from the, in the Hebrew Bible, um... I, I don't think the message is that we're not allowed to doubt. Mm-mm. I think on the contrary, we're supposed to trust in God and believe in him, even though we have this doubt in our heart. We're supposed mm-hmm. to overcome that. You know, and it's like I've heard people talk about in battle, in war, um, you know, people who've never been to war say you shouldn't be afraid. And the people who've been to war say, no, you go you, you go over the foxhole, even though you've been you are, you're terrified and you still do it because mm-hmm. you, because, you, you know, you, you, you've got to trust in God. Uh, that's why they say there's no atheist in the foxhole. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I think that to me, that's what it's about. It's about trusting God and having faith in him, even though you have some doubt in your heart. And you're looking at this and saying, this this is impossible, but I know nothing is beyond God mm-hmm. because I've seen the things that he did in Egypt and I see the things that he does in our lives even today. Mm-hmm. And so I do trust in him and I do believe him and have faith in him, even though my heart is suffering and crying out, how can this possibly be? I'm still going to trust in him. Mm. Well, you know, this will be one of these ones where we'll go back to where you're, where you're misinterpreting Jeremiah's aha. Uh-huh. But look, oh, okay. I'll give that to all you. All right, so I'm, I'm going to pile through and we're going to go through all the aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I really want. <laughs> is that really what you want? <laughs> There's 15 in the snot. But let's take, for example. <laughs> you oh, just oh. won't do it. No, oh, I'm just kidding. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. The word of Jehovah came to me before I created you in the womb. I selected you before you were born. And I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet concerning the nations. I reply, replied, aha, uh-huh, Lord Yehovah, I don't know how to speak for I'm still a boy. Mm. In other words, Yehovah is telling him, I'm, you're going to be my prophet. He's like, 
what? Mm-hmm. That's how uh uh-huh properly translates into modern he- English. What? <laughs> no, I'm telling you. Yeah, okay. And so he says here, what? Well, I know you're, nothing's beyond you. Okay, I get it. Okay, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, we can go through all 15, but I'm right. So no, okay. Actually, that's a good That's a good uh, uh, homework for people. I don't know what the Strong's number is because I'm looking in, in the Hebrew Concordance program here. Um, but go look at all 15 examples of the word aha uh-huh in the Tanakh. Should I list them off right now? Or? No, that's okay. okay. We'll put it in. A, we'll, we'll make go, it a, yeah. yeah, Keith will do that. So go look <laughs> it up and um, uh-huh. and go through them. You know, that, that, that's a great word yeah. study. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go. Well, on. well again, we're in, is he, and he, goes, he does Egypt yeah. twice, actually. He's Egypt in verse 20. You set signs Egypt's and wonders in the land deal. of Egypt, and then in twenty, and then in twenty one, you brought your people Israel out of the land of Egypt. Uh, that's what you did with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm. That's just used uh, several times in Scripture, and gave them this land which you swore to their fair father, forefathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. We know about that phrase. And then he's still talking. They came in and took possession of it, but they did not obey your voice or walk in your law, which is why we're in the situation we're in now. Is what he's saying. They have done nothing of. All that you commanded them to do, therefore you have made all this calamity come upon them. Then there's a shift um, because now he's going to give us the details of what's happening in the siege. And it, like really, Nehemiah, if you think about it, if we just started this section where, where, where the parallel, where the prophet section starts, and we just start it and we don't read the few verses before, mm-hmm. up until verse 24, we don't know that there's a siege. Right. In other words, literally, this is where he's, and it's like reminding him again how amazing this is. Behold, the siege ramps have reached the city to take it, and the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans who fight against it because of the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and what you have spoken, in the middle of that he says, and what you have spoken has come to pass, and behold, you see it. So you could read Jeremiah in the beginning chapters and go through yeah. it, and you'd see this is spoken. That's why I don't think he's surprised at all. But anyway, God is saying these things are going to happen. They're going to happen. They're going to happen. The word of the Lord comes to him. They go through the process. He reminds them of who God is in this prayer. And then verse 25 says what? Go on. You have said to me, O Yehovah God, or O Adonai Yehovah, buy for yourself. Now he's back to what happened. Mm-hmm. Buy for yourself the field with money and call in witnesses, although the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. In case you missed the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why does he put that verse there, do you think? What's he saying? Why does he bring that after all after this prayer? I think there's still an element of disbelief. Mm. And the word of Jehovah came to Jeremiah saying, Behold, I am Jehovah, the God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me? And that's the same word as we had before. Mm. The word of the week, yipale, with the root pelam. Yeah, that's something. The yud there means he will. And this is a nephal, a passive verb. Mm-hmm. Is anything beyond Yehovah or too difficult for him? Mm. Behold, yeah. ani Yehovah Elohe. I am Yehovah, the God of all flesh. Yeah. Is anything too difficult for me? And I would say absolutely, one hundred percent, not. I think I would agree with uh, with with Jeremiah in this. It's like mm-hmm. well, it's, there's nothing, no, nothing. Well, and then hold he, on. So, and, so, and then so he Jeremiah comes, initially said it. And now Yehovah is reinforcing it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I yeah. agree with both of them. Yeah. Nothing's too hard for him. Yeah. Wow. What a great, I don't know, man. I think that that's, if I, if I, really, if I get a chance, I got to, I yeah. got to go and, and, and preach this path. This passage, this prayer Nothing of Jeremiah is, mind, is just amazing. It's just can, amazing. Can we read four more verses? Because they're, they're essentially the explanation of the prophecy in case it still wasn't. And you want to go beyond the I, section I, I here? I do. Okay, no question. And, we started and, out four verses. Well, and, and it's because, you know, and here I wonder why did they end the section so early? Maybe they were in a hurry to get out of synagogue. But really, verses 36 and 37, and then again, 43 and 44, they wrap it up. They leave no doubt about what the prophecy is about. And I, and I think those are actually the key verses in the entire prophecy, in my opinion. Um, so I want to read those real quick. Though they're not in the section. 37. But I love this. You, get, yeah. you guys, this is extra credit. You're yeah. getting a bonus section here. Well, I mean, it, it, really what we're doing is we're putting it in context. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, I have, I've said this before that what the, you know, the, it's interesting when the rabbis have a debate with a Christian, uh, they'll say, you Christians, you take these things out of context. But the rabbis are masters of taking things out of context. Um, that's what the Talmud is all about, uh, is taking things out of context. Anyway, so let's put it back into context. Um, Jeremiah 32, 36, 30, 37. But now assuredly, thus says Jehovah, the God of Israel, concerning the city which you said, it is being delivered into the hands of the king of Babylon through the sword, through famine, and through pestilence. See, I will gather them from all the lands to which I have banished them in my anger and wrath. 
um, and in great rage, and I will bring them back to this place and let them dwell secure. He's saying this before it even happened. Well, I guess the first round of exile did happen, but um, verse 43, and fields shall again be purchased in this land of which you say it is a desolation without man or beast. It is delivered into the hands of the Chaldeans. Fields should be purchased and deeds written and sealed and witnesses called in the land of Benjamin and the environs of Jerusalem and the towns of Judah, the towns of the hill country, the towns of the Shephelah and the towns of the Negev, for I will restore their fortunes, declares Yehovah. And so we see here, um, I can't stand it, restore their fortune. It says I will return their captivity in mm. Hebrew. Um, <laughs> uh, referring to the Jews who were taken captive or and at this point hadn't actually been taken captive yet. It's unbelievable. This is an amazing passage. This, this, this is such an exciting passage. He basically prophesies something that's completely impossible, mm -hmm. and yet it comes to pass. Mm -hmm. In the time of Jer – and that's the, the amazing thing to me. You know, in the story of Elisha, where he talks about the grain in the, in the gate of Samaria, and people should go listen to that episode. Um, uh, it was one day before the prophecy was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. in the time, this didn't, wasn't even fulfilled in Jeremiah's lifetime. Mm -hmm. He died, an old man – Believing this prophecy would be fulfilled, and it was 70 years before it was finally fulfilled. Good job, Jeremiah. Amazing. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. Wow. Okay. Well, um, yeah. it's your turn to pray if you want to. I don't know if you Well, I, I want to read one more verse, a little bit more extra credit. A little more extra credit. Another no, bonus, folks. No, we got to do it. Um, yeah. So Jeremiah 16, 9. For thus says Jehovah of hosts, the God of Israel, I am going to banish from this place in your days and before your eyes. The sound of mirth and gladness, the sound of bridegroom and bride. And when Jeremiah prophesied this first prophecy, people thought, he's crazy. What are we talking about? We, we've never had things better. The economy's great. Our finances are great. We're, we're, we've, we've gotten to deal with the Babylonians, and we're, we're dealing with the Egyptians in the back room. Everything is fine. We've got the superpowers on us. Now you've gone and to the next prophet section. You're the, in Jeremiah on, 16. No, 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 no. <laughs> so then Jeremiah 33. Um, let's see. Is that it? Um, let's see. Yeah, 33, he then uh, gives the next prophecy, which is how, how, how they're going to come back. And, and I'm bringing this because it parallels this idea of buying and selling fields. And I mentioned this, but I want to actually read it because it's such a power. I love this. This is one of my favorite prophecies in the entire Tanakh. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 33, 10 to 11. Thus says Yehovah, again, there shall be heard in this place, which you say is ruined without man or beast. Doesn't that sound similar? Mm -hmm. In the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man, without inhabitants, without beast. The sound of mirth and gladness, this voice of bridegroom and bride, the voice of those who cry, give thanks to Yehovah of hosts. For Yehovah is good. I love that it actually says Yehovah. That speaking his name and proclaiming these words is a fulfillment of the prophecy. Give thanks to Yehovah of hosts. It doesn't say give thanks to Adonai of hosts. Give thanks to Yehovah of hosts for Yehovah is good for his kindness is everlasting. And they bring thanksgiving offerings to the house of Yehovah for I will restore. Literally again, it's I will bring back the captivity of the land as of old, says Yehovah. And that, that's my prayer. Yehovah, creator of the universe. Elohe kol basar, God of all flesh, I ask you, Yehovah, to continue to fulfill this prophecy and bring back the captivity of Israel. In my lifetime, I've seen such amazing fulfillments of this. There were literally over a million Jews being held captive in the Soviet Union. And, and I remember my youth people used to say, that will never be solved. Hundreds of years from now, we'll still be struggling to free those Jews and now it's it's not even a lifetime later. I'm you know I'm I'm not even an old man yet, and already this this it's been fulfilled. And those captives are back here, and you can walk around the streets of Jerusalem and see those captives, and they're being, you know, uh, there there there's joy and mirth among those people, and they're and they're the the sound of the bride and the groom, they're rejoicing in the streets of Jerusalem, literally in fulfillment of this prophecy. And I'm just so blessed to have had the opportunity to see these things, Yehovah, and and, and to see. With my own eyes, and I have the faith in my heart, but to be able to see with my own eyes your fulfillment of prophecy in my lifetime and in, in, through your people, Israel, is such a great blessing to me, Yehovah. I'm so thankful. And Yehovah, I, I ask that you, um, that you bring peace to Israel, that you bring peace to this people that now we're actually recording this, Yehovah, as you know, on Purim. Thousands of years ago, there was an evil Persian ruler named Haman who wanted to wipe out our people. And he sent letters throughout the land with his signet ring. And today, the evil Persian rulers want to wipe us out once again. And, and they're sending out their message on Twitter to wipe us out. And Yehovah, I ask you to turn the hearts. You know, back in the time of Purim, there was a foolish Persian king who didn't realize what the 
what Heyman was doing. He didn't quite understand because he was he was just physically drunk all the time. And today we have someone who's spiritually drunk, who's being deceived by the Persians. Jehovah, I ask you to turn his heart so he can understand what's going on. And, and if not, you will find a way to save your people Israel. Because nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is hidden for you. Nothing is beyond your ability, Jehovah. I ask you to protect this city and this people and all who call upon your name, Jehovah. Amen. Thank you for listening to Prophet Pearls with Nehemia Gordon and Keith Johnson. For more information, please visit nehemiaswall.com and bfainternational.com.